Hello everybody, welcome to the painting afternoon today. How are you doing? What's your name and what country do you watching from? My name is Olga. I'm absolutely passionate about painting in my style and I'm so happy today this wonderful in the middle of a week I'm going to share with you something know the style if you're new to the style I'm painting I paint in watercolor loose style of painting I don't use any pencil or sketch in my work but sometimes on my painting demonstrations you might see that I took a marker a piece of paper and started to draw in order to explain and to display some you know tips and behind what happened in my head and uh, what I think about before I start to paint but actually I don't I absolutely I just took a new white piece of paper I throw paints on top see what happens adopt during the painting session and actually you can't see any sketches or uh, marks here this is totally free work so if you are an artist who wish your paintings to be loosed or if you already have your own style and just want to you know learn some new tips of tips and tricks and um, find out something how you can improve your painting improve your painting or how you can you know change something try experiment this is a wonderful space I'm welcome you during painting afternoon and I'm happy to meet for this one I note that okay the first thing which is obvious to see is that this wing reached the edge of a paper and I wanted to share with you a few expert tips on a painting uh, so your painting looks have more professional look. professional <laughs> professional tips for professional looking paintings okay let's say so so the first thing which you pay attention to is the size of your paper I recommend you to paint on a large piece without any borders so you don't know where will be the border you start to paint in the center and later you can cut it cut it for your wish this is the best way but if you for example have limited space like I had here like this one for example uh, the, you should actually where is my pencil okay I haven't pencil but I can show you for example reserve this space and try uh, not to reach it as you can see I'm wonderful drawer illustrator <laughs> this is my attempt to paint a straight line <laughs> okay so this is the borders just reserve one inch in your imagination just in your imagination and try to place your subject in your subject inside this frame for example, if I paint this bird, I try to uh, place it so it uh, placed inside this chase, this frame. For example, this is this space for future bird. And here in the corner I have floral in bloom blooms of florals when I think before I start to paint I start to manage it and find where I place my subject so it's in safe and I don't reach the borders so it, it will be somewhere here or there see it so I don't reach the edges I have free space my painting is breathing there is air around I can play with the background freely okay so this was the tip number one 
think before you start to paint and reserve a space for borders and try to place your subject inside this chase. Think about the borders, okay? The next tips, tip I wanted to share with you and how I think when I move to the next painting and fixing, correcting my mistakes, let's say. For example, here, I'm not actually satis it's nice. This is apples, apples because I noticed that I have noticed that I used to paint this way all the time. And I don't like to paint in this way. Each time I paint, this is an open adventure. And it's not interesting. Once I have a pattern, a template, it's not an art, it's not a freestyle of painting anymore. So here, what I did, I noticed, this is the same thing if I paint an apple in blue. So what I'm going to do on a new piece of paper, I'm going to think how to make it more interesting or paint in a way I didn't paint before. For example, uh, I would make it a bit different, paint in a different way. For example, this is the same flower, same shapes, nothing new. But actually, with watercolor, what I love about this style of painting, you can each time use different techniques, apply different brush marks, you know, apply watercolor techniques. So each time it will be fresh painting in front of you. And another thing, look, this is absolutely powered, spontaneous brush marks. I'm not accurate at all. And this is another thing when, why I love to paint in my style of painting. Because with the free style of painting, You open for an adventure and you can paint. My thought fly away. <laughs> for example, there are a few blooms. yellow in the center like that maybe add a few unfolded bands one or two or a bunch of them let's in the center just a few dots don't be perfect and and for example if I took this one brush here I can create spontaneous yeah look since now this is absolutely different way of painting this is what I wanted to show you and what I talk with you about let's connect this one but here maybe with more accurate brush marks and another thing, no matter how they mixed, what happens, how they're gonna to be, you know, connected. This is an open adventure. 
the style I'm painting, I don't know what will be, how colors gonna to interact with each other, how they mix, how they flow. I don't know and I'm super excited and I give a space for the medium to paint together with me. This is wonderful way of painting which I discovered and fall in love and you know love to share it with the others and I'm super happy to meet new artists who understand me and get curious as well as me also and get wonderful results and refresh their existing style with those tips and tricks. Another thing which you can do, for example, I took a brush, I fill it with clear water and I can wash away some pigments for interesting effects because first of all this is water medium and this is a collaboration work together with the water so each time you paint you will achieve unique painting and it will be it will be unique results every time if you let the medium to play a game together with you if you let the medium to flow if you're not worried about what happened if you mix colors use different techniques every time oh it's still wet so no matter how I paint a dot or pollen it blur because it's this area is still wet but here it doesn't and I can add a few dots of pollen yeah I love it I like I like how uh, this flower pop in from the paper with just a few brush marks look and here let's see or oh, it dry so or I can splat on top if you watched my course watercolor treasure chest where I shared my favorite watercolor techniques I showed how I do that how I splat color on top of a wash Wow, look what happens. <laughs> oh, I start to I start to play and not worry what happens with the painting. And this is just uh, this I have something kind of like this shape. So here if I would paint my bird I would place it maybe somewhere here like that. So I reach the border, but here I don't paint and I use it because painting, when it's finished, it's going to be framed. So I reserve this space in order to my painting to be framed in a future and it will be cut it a little bit and managed. Uh, this red squirrel, did you see it? I might show you a few hints in the process while I was painting it. This is where here I wanted to show you how I would paint if I continue. Because so many artists get stuck, get stopped on this stage. They paint beautiful first layer, achieve interesting watermarks and don't know where to move to. So here I wanted to share with you a few tips and I mixed violet, orange and red in order to achieve this kind of black. It's not a black but kind of kind of black. It 
my favorite part <laughs> you know we are girls and this is my favorite part to paint a whiskers eyelashes So I paint eyelashes and I decide the intensi intensity, how bold it should be. And look, once I add just a few touches, oh, it's so cute face expression. Just a few touches. I took another brush, clear, size number four, and softer around like this and here also just a little bit here yeah, to make it more brighter more alive and look she's watching at me right now my mood changes because i have a friend lovely fluffy and cute friend i'm not sure if i'm gonna to change this one Maybe just a few eyelashes because we are girls. We love to apply makeup, eyelashes. Just a bit. If not any detail at all. Okay, I smooth it. I'm gonna do exactly the same thing here, just a few brush marks like this. I took another brush and smooth it. Let's see how it works for my animal. Do I achieve fluffy illusion or not? Then I need more brush marks yeah with each brush mark she became more alive she's coming alive with the each brush mark super exciting and I'm trying not to repeat so just a few brush marks smooth and that's it I will decide later where I'm going to move with this one, with this area here. Let's jump to the nose. Maybe I clear my brush. I took color from previous demonstration from Goldfinch pollen, kind of brown and violet. Brown and violet. The same brown from the fur with a bit of a violet. And I'm searching where to place a nose for sure I'm continuously looking at my photograph I'm going to share with you high quality photograph I'm painting today inside the course in the lecture you can download it and what else maybe with my clear brush I paint an arc like a smile <laughs> This is a smile. I started from very, very light pigment because I'm not confident on this stage. I'm searching, I'm altering, managing where the nose will be. I don't know yet. So here I'm listening to painting. Am I satisfied with the placement of a mouth or not? If I don't satisfy, actually here I satisfy so I keep developing it and maybe I start to think about the hands pause maybe she's holding something and again very suggestiony a few dots and I'm guessing where the hand will be I'm not paint directly and right away I am listening smooth maybe a few brush marks like this is it okay hands actually tricky to paint 
And what I notice in loose style of painting, I don't know if it, it, if it works with other styles of painting, but in freestyle, which I am painting, I notice if you if you paint with those accurate suggestion brush marks and paint not every single finger, you don't paint every single nail. You paint just a few and maybe half of it, maybe one third of it, and you move very gradually. This is the best way I discover to paint hands in order them to look realistic and you know not overwork actually this is um, area of a focus I know that you are gonna to first pay attention to the central area to the face and these hands are um, you know, right in the center, just a little bit below the eyes, the main focal on the painting for animal paintings. So especially here, I don't want to make a heavy expression. I don't want to overwork with too much details about the hands. Because my uh, interpretation for this squirrel is to say this is my friend we are the one look at each other and get curious i don't want to paint every single you know nail or finger and be realistic of what does she do and what does she hold or chewing this is not an information board this is a piece of art and here I share my feelings, my expression, when I first time see this wonderful animal. This is my story. Okay, so actually this is the way how I'm going to continue to develop this painting. I'm in the future going to jump from one section to another. Later I'm going to jump to the pose. And in the next part chapter I'm wanting to show you actually this is painting afternoon and I didn't paint I just show you and shared with you some tips and tricks and I actually wanted during my painting afternoons show you how I paint and I have this new white piece of paper and I'm gonna to start to paint just in seconds I'm super excited Remember? I talk with you about borders and this is exactly the same thing and I wanted to show you another wonderful thing about the style I'm painting. Tips and tricks I shared with you are, un are universal. You can use them for any subject. I started my painting afternoon today starting from Goldfinch and I showed you tips and tricks about according to the Goldfinch but right now my subject is absolutely different this is a fish but uh, the algorithm is the same formula is the same so nothing new what I'm going to do reserve space right so I have this space and at least I will have this uh, uh, I'm still learning how to paint straight lines <laughs> and my fish my fish will be you know what maybe I talk with you a little bit you know my course which start which started actually this month uh, my course will started and it will be last since September and each month e during each week there will be new chapter new tutorial and new tips and tricks reveal and there will be for particular season two of my course will there will be a lot of tips a lot of information about proportions 
composition, sketching, about choosement of colors, all of this stuff. Uh, it will be a lot of information and what I wanted to say. Yeah, maybe today I talk with you as well about map, which I call map. What is the map? Drawing a map. For example, if you gonna to paint a fish, what's important for you? What's the most attractive part of a body for fish? For sure, this is face, right? Maybe attention to the back and the line of a body, flippers and the tail. But when you paint in loose style of painting, when you paint free, you shouldn't paint every everything. And we have amazing watercolor techniques discovered and you can use them and not paint actually but actually you should have some where to start from the point the spot on the paper where you can you know rely on trust rely feeling safe to start from and develop your painting gradually starting from this starting from the starting point <laughs> you're welcome anaqua and here as well, I know I have my border and I think the head will be the starting point and then my fish will be developed using watercolor techniques. But what I'm gonna, I'm gonna start and this is what I call mapping, draw the map. Uh, for example, if you have an adventure, you're gonna to travel, you have a family trip for sure, before you start your adventure, before you uh, put your stuff inside the car, you think where you're gonna to go, how much gas you need, how many food to bring, right? What will be your points where you have a rest, where you are gonna to go to sleep or go for supper? This is exactly the same algorithm in painting, what I call drawing a map. I will think about the points where I'm going to stop and paint a face, where I'm going to paint flippers, how much space do I need for tail, do I need a lot of space or it will be just a little flipper? All of this drawing a map. And I'm super excited to share this wonderful technique, the very beginning, particular for this fish. Fish. This is two points, two stops, two spots. for it and this will be my starting spot and where my adventure begins from this point a mouth let's paint a mouth a hint maybe again I'm using branches color from golden I love to mix colors so um, don't be surprised right now I'm going to splatter different pigments absolutely you know seems like different from my subject from my photograph which I'm going to share with you below in inside the course And I'm gonna to, you know, have fun by mixing them. This is different pinks and yellow, and maybe turquoise, let's see, kinda. Yeah, I, I don't know what will be. I clear my brush, fill it with water, and what I'm gonna to do, connect them. Mix, so they're gonna to mix by themselves, and I'm, I'm not even mixing them. 
What I'm doing? I wet the section where the color should flow. Like this. Uh, maybe you have different idea. You know, at the beginning I thought to make my favorite, to play my favorite game while painting afternoons. Guess what it is? But I wanted to share with, so you guess what I'm painting, you know? I wanted to show you, uh, to start to paint this fish and to leave by you, decide what I'm painting and what you see here. But actually I, you know, I already tell that my course will, which coming so soon, this month actually started. And I have so many tips to share, so I wanted so hard to introduce you this drawing a map chapter, my formula. So, you know, I skip it and instead of painting, guess what it is? I showed you and shared with you this formula. A chick. I paint just with water. The colors which appears from the mix which I painted. And the back. So this is the next step, the next adventure. A back, a flipper. We have a sunshine. Uh, where else? And here, watercolor techniques. If I took larger brush, size number 10, I can uh, paint a flipper just using the water. I wet it. I, for example, bring a few pigment here. More, more pigment and what watercolor does it gonna to flow into wet section see it maybe correct this chick and I don't touch this as time goes by be patient and look see it. make step back and look how this color gonna to spread through this flipper And I know I can turn my paper. It's gonna to flow. I paint at an angle so colors naturally flow from upside down. Another flipper here. Also. And maybe I change the color. I add another pink, different from this one. Very simple. I keep it simple. What if I add water on top of this wash? Does it work? For this one, I will share with you a high quality photograph inside the course of season two. So what I'm doing here, I'm showing you, actually I'm painting and creating tutorials for the my course the wheel season two. And later I will provide all the links, materials I'm using, high quality photographs and final stages. How I finish my paintings, goldfinch or squirrel or from my previous sessions from February painting afternoon. All of this gonna to be, I'm not promised, some of them will be the tutorials for the course real season two and i hope this so here i have very light essence essence of a fish this is not a fish for sure this is very first very light layer uh, this is just the beginning i just started to paint it but already i have something and the most important part of this <laughs> wow, Anne Catherine! Uh, is um, I get inspired. Start very light, suggestion, just a hints. I draw a map. I showed you a map how to, you know, move. I guide you. I bring you together with me on our family trip today. I hope you enjoy it, and yeah. So what's your favorite today? 
fish, squirrel or a goldfinch? Let me know in comments below to this video. And yeah, this is our and yes, see you next time on March 26th. I'm, I'm so happy you are here, join this wonderful painting afternoon and paint together with me. See you. Bye.